I'm Dave Palumbo, founder of Species Nutrition. From my earliest bodybuilding days, I believed in only putting the best in my body. And that lives on in the Species Nutrition line of products. I put my name and reputation on every bottle of Species Nutrition products. If you want to be your absolute best, join the evolution. Welcome back to Live With, brought to you by Species Nutrition. I'm Dave Palumbo, and today's guest is a Team Universe men's physique Class E champ and new IFBB pro. I want to welcome to the show Matt Grego. Congratulations. Thank you, Dave. It's an honor to be on the show. Yeah, you know, you reached out to me after the win, and I told you let's hold off till after the Olympics because I don't want to get lost in the shuffle. But I love to, you know, feature guys that have worked hard and overcome obstacles and achieved their goals. You're only 26 years old, you know. I, I like your story because you know you started in film school, and you and you were going to a really good film school too. Talk to me a little bit about how you decided, hey, I want to become a filmmaker, and then what made you decide you didn't want to become a filmmaker. <laughs> So I was into film through the post-production side of things. So I wanted to do like video editing for like movies. And I got through that by playing video games. I was making like montages um, back when I was younger. Mm -hmm. And then I went to film school and I really didn't, I liked the introduction to it, you know, learning about film. But when I got to like actually writing a script, I was like, this is just not for me. So that was my, my sign to kind of exit. And then I dropped out of uh, film school. Mm. How long did you go for? I went for... 13 or 14 months. But the thing with that school is they do everything really, you know, fast. So mm -hmm. you can get a degree in about 28 months. Oh, wow. Okay. Now, yeah. did you take away anything? I mean, because you, let's face it, today, you, you really, you can't make money, you can't be popular unless you have social media. And obviously, social media entails, obviously, videos and video editing to a certain degree if you have your own channel. Have you learned, did you learn a lot of skills that you're actually using now in uh, promoting yourself? Oh, absolutely. I mean, the main thing I learned at film school was networking. Mm -hmm. So they were very big. The, the second we got in there, you had to go talk to people from different, it's, it's a, you, uh, the, the university is international. So there's tons of people from all over, you know, Africa, everywhere. So my biggest asset from that school was the networking that came with it, you know, socializing people from all different walks of life. But obviously I learned some things from post-production and about cameras. I, I had a photography class where I learned a ton. I use it for my Instagram now to help, you know, boost out my social media presence. Right. So like what, like if you had to think like, you know, when I think back to medical school, I think there's a couple things that come to mind that I, that really, you know, the, the, the anatomy I learned, the, the physiology courses I took were so instrumental in how I could now visualize the body in my mind and how I could, you know, basically explain biochemistry to people and how the processes work in the body. What did, what do you think that you've, basically been brainwashed into your brain that now that you just intuitively use because you've got it from film school? I would say it's quality of everything. Mm -hmm. You know, you see a lot of people who are trying to push social media content now. Yes. And it's not quality. You know, I personally know that if I go to someone's page, they're not HD videos, I'm not going to want to watch it. So they always were saying that quality is everything and make content that has value. That's, that's a big one too. A lot of people just, you know, post random workouts. There's no value behind it. You know what I mean? So I would say content that is quality and you know value. That's the two big things I learned from that school. And what what do you think is important in, in our industry in terms of like what do you what do you think that people value out there? In other words, what what's something that you would say you would put out there that people would say, hey, this is great, and then something you, you would put out that people that you would say if you looked at it from a film student's perspective, say this is crap. Are you asking like kind of like quality of content or? Yeah, we, we're just like in other words, the stuff that you think in our industry is something that you should be focusing on putting out and stuff that you should be not focusing on being put, putting uh, out. So to start off, I think what you should be posting is, you know, quality content where there's the, the captions just like back day, but you're actually explaining what you did on back day, mm -hmm. your thought process behind the exercise selection. If mm -hmm. you eat a meal, you know, tell people why you chose that meal, kind of like what you do when you educate people on the show. Yes. I think important but i think what people also do in social media which is not good is they bring negativity you know they're not positive i think what you got to use social media for is positivity you know right. spread a good message i think that's why i've done well always is i've always kind of kept my head down stayed mm -hmm. positive and focus on providing value for whoever follows my pages 
That's good advice for people. And, you know, like I said, I always like to take and, and I like to learn too. And then so when, you know, I didn't have the opportunity to go to film school or anything like that. And this is probably when I went, if, when I would have gone in the 80s, probably would not have even <laughs> been helpful for what's going on nowadays because things have changed so much. But I mean, you really can't, you know, if you want to make a living at what you're doing on social media, you have to really have some kind of a basis or educational background. I mean, if you, if you can't go to film school like you did, what would you think would be the best next best way to like learn the right way to do things? Do you have any suggestions for people? Yeah, I would. So part of my past, I did digital marketing. I would definitely research digital marketing for social media, you know, just as like a base to learn uh, because a lot of people don't know where to start. They don't really know how to develop a calendar for social media. They don't know right. really what to post on social media. So you kind of have to plan things out. So when I'm posting on social media, it's always, okay, is this going to look good on my timeline? Is it going to provide value? Is the is the content quality? You now that's kind of my my three steps to making sure that it's something I can post. So that that's where I would go to figure out how to like optimize your social media presence. Right now, when you dropped out of school, you you did something very similar to what I did when I left medical school. You basically immersed yourself in your training, um, which obviously was something that you were very passionate about. At what point did you say to yourself, "Hey, I'd like to compete and and and, and see how you know what all this work I've been putting in is gonna." If it's going to pay off, you know, so to speak. Yeah. So I was training at a really like hardcore powerlifting gym, you know, everyone's going really hard. They got metal on and I was making, I put on like 15 pounds in three months. Mm. And I was like, wow, like I got good shape. I feel like I have good structure. I feel like I have the genetics compete. So after seeing that, I kept on, you know, growing, growing. I knew physique wasn't like you had to be, you know, necessarily too big, but I knew you had to have some size. So after I felt like I was at a decent point, I was like, okay, I want to do a show next year. And that was 2015 going to 2016. Now, you said you actually did the Junior USA pretty fast off the, off the track and you came in last place. <laughs> was that, was that, a, was that a, a, a shot to your ego? I mean, I mean it, I'm glad you mentioned it because it, it, a lot of people think, wow, this, this guy got a pro card. Everything probably came super easy to him. And, you know, and that's, but that's not the case with you. Not at all. I got dead last. I legit spent the entire rest of that trip by myself. <laughs> I, I, I didn't spend time with family, friends, nobody. I sat there by myself, reflected. <laughs> I was like, this is this is embarrassing, number one, but like, I knew I had more in me. Yeah. So it was like it was a huge wake up call. Right, right. And is that because you jumped in too quickly? I really hadn't been training that long. I was not ready at all. I was not ready by any means. <laughs> now, what made you decide to, to, just because you had won a show locally, you figured, well, if I'm qualified, I might as well do it. Because that's a lot of people's mindset, right? Yeah, I thought I was way better than I actually was, to be honest with you. <laughs> no, but it's, I'm glad that you said that because there's a lot of people out there that they think just because they're qualified. I know people who qualify by the, by the virtue of the fact that there was no one in their class. And they still think that they should go to the nationals because they qualify. And the truth is that you go to a national competition when you're ready and not when you think you're ready, but when, when other people validate that you're ready too, because you don't want to waste your time and money going there, you know? And you don't want to spend time by yourself like I do. Yeah, yeah. Like, you don't want to be depressed for the next year either. <laughs> <yeah>. <laughs> but sometimes that lights a fire under us too and makes us better, right? Yeah, it changed my life. I can't lie to you. It, it changed my life, 100%. So now you, in 2017, you said your home gym shut down uh, that you were training at. What, what had that happened? It was a bunch of lease issues. And, and this is my, the gym I love too. So yeah. it was really devastating because I didn't know where to, you know, like when you have a home gym, you don't want to go to another gym. That's your home gym. Yeah. But it, it just shut down abruptly. We got like a week's notice and the, you know, chains on the door and gone forever. Interesting. Now you, you took off some time, you know, uh, after that, and you obviously were trying to grow and put some size on, but then in 18, you got really sick and that was a huge, uh, um, you know, that was a serious thing because you were at the hospital and they didn't know what was wrong with you. Tell us a little bit about how that came about. So I had this fever and it wasn't going away. It got worse and worse and worse. And I went to a walk-in center initially and they told me it was a viral infection. You're good to go. Like just, you know, rest, yada, yada, you'll be okay. And it was about two days later, I still didn't get better. So I went to a patient first and at the patient first, I got my blood work and I talked to some woman, some uh, doctor there and she didn't speak very good English. So that was not fun. Yeah. And she comes in the room and she goes hospital right now. I, I'm like, what, what are you, what are you talking about? She goes hospital right now. Really? Yeah. So you have to go to the ER right away. That's scary. Yeah. So what, so, when they, so what they did, they ran every test in the, in the book on you and they couldn't figure out what was going on. Oh, they ran every test, blood work every 30 minutes, every, 
everyone had the the masks and like the, the suits on because they thought it's an infectious disease that they got oh, from different sh- countries. Like, I didn't go to a different country, you know, I was right. New- were you like afraid? It, you know, when stuff like that, I, look, I was in the hospital when I was 17 because I, I had a ruptured appendix. They didn't know what it was though. And they were running it like same thing with you. They ran every like test in the world. It was they got people sticking their finger up my my rear end, you know, feeling this abscess that's inside me. You know, I thought I was never leaving the hospital. I thought that was it. I'm dead. You know, um, because you start because when you see the doctors panicking, that's when you get scared, right? Yep. I thought I was gonna die to be honest with you, Dave. Yeah. I, I was like, I might die because they told me I might have leukemia because they saw they're like they come in, they're very serious when they say this too. Yeah. They're like we found a cell looks like leukemia. We found this, you know. They even pulled my girlfriend aside. And oh they really? Her, yeah, and they and they're like, do you have uh, do you have AIDS? I'm like, what? <laughs> <laughs> oh my god. Yeah, I was terrified. I was. Yeah. I don't want to go to hospital ever again. After right, that. right, right. So, I mean, what were your symptoms that you went in with? I had a fever and my white blood cell counts were really not, they weren't normal. That's what the issue was. They thought uh, I had some sickness with the white blood, you know, the, the white blood cell counts were off. So it tur- it, what did it turn out being after all was said and done? Did they ever figure it out? It was throat B after all that debacle. Wow. So you had a, like a weird uh, bacterial infection, essentially. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, they couldn't figure it out until they ran, I think, the uh, the special test for it. That came back a couple right. of cultures, I believe they are. Yeah, so what did they do? Just give you antibiotics? Uh, they didn't give me anything. They just kind of let, you know, run its course at that point. They just that, discharged me. That's odd because, you know, you think bacteria, antibiotics, right? You know? Yeah, that's what I thought, too. So you, <laughs> after you recover from that, now do you, do you have, like, a renewed, like, because, you know, whenever you get sick and you can't go to the gym and stuff like that, I always find that like it makes you want to train more because you, you kind of don't take it for granted anymore, you know? I got out of the hospital. It was about, I got out about like noon. I took a nap, I ate some pizza, and I went to go train legs the same day. <laughs> oh, that's great. That's awesome. Yeah. So now in 19, you actually uh, placed top five at the Team Universe and at the Nationals. I mean, you had to know at that point that you your physique had come up to a, a level that you know people were respecting and that could stand with anyone pretty much in the uh, at the top of the amateur league. Yeah, hundred percent. I I really thought that I had to look to go pro. I just thought it was more so like nailing my condition, nailing you know certain body parts, making sure I'm full. I do have a hard time filling out on stage. I have a pretty fast metabolism, so that's always an issue. But I knew I had to look. I just needed to refine what I had to make mm-hmm. it you know a reality. Now you were doing some digital marketing. You were making some money and stuff like that. You got an award, and and then you know when COVID hit. You just I mean, explain to us what happened because you got depressed and you quit your job, huh? Yeah. So in COVID, I, I got very depressed. So did my girlfriend. We were lifting in our basement. You know, we didn't have much equipment. Um, I was working. Uh, I was a personal trainer as well before this, but obviously yeah. I can't personal train anymore. Um, I was doing digital marketing at a private equity firm. And pretty much I, I did a lot of soul searching during that time. And I didn't really think that what I was doing was meant for me. So... After talking to my close friends and, and my girlfriend and some family members, I was like, I'm just going to quit everything. You know, I'm just going to quit everything. <laughs> I'm going to focus on coaching. Yeah. I'm going to go all in on becoming a pro and doing what, you know, it takes to become a pro. And right. I think it's going to work out. Let's take a risk. And that was the second risk you had taken. The first one was you dropped out of film school. So you, you're kind of <laughs> comfortable with, with doing what, what, what you feel in your gut is the right thing, right? Yeah, I'm, I'm big on going with your, your intuition, you know. I, I feel like I can make it happen. And I never really thought the 9 to 5 lifestyle was for me, technically. Kind of like you, you know, you, you follow your passions. I'm, yeah. I'm kind of the same way. So I, I knew that I need to make a change because the direction I was going was not, you know, made for me. Now, once you did that, how long did it take you before you started making, like, good enough money that it was actually, like, people started saying, like, your parents would be like, oh, that was a good decision, <laughs> you know, Matt. Yeah. <laughs> it, honestly, it, 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 at, at first, it was kind of a little bit slower. Yeah. Um, but then, as I started my prep, as, as you know, when you start a prep, more people are watching you. You know, things kind of grow. Uh huh. When I was in the middle of my prep, things really started to explode. They really started to explode. Is so, it because of the way you were documenting your prep? Yeah. So one thing I made sure to do with this prep, and my girlfriend's always tell me to document more, document more, is I, I kind of wanted to expose myself, not expose, but be vulnerable. Yeah. You know, really show my my lows and highs, and kind of bring everyone with. Yeah. And doing that actually helped people really attach to my story and help to want to, you know, follow me, support me and just, you know, be along my journey. So I think the biggest thing was I just really let everyone in. I didn't really hide too much. I was more open. Right. And yeah. and you had the film school knowledge of how to do that. And so 
I always tell people, everything you do in your life, whether, you know, people think, oh, well, he quit that. You know what, you quit at a point where you knew you had the information you needed to take it to the next level. Because we all know internally what we need. Like, I, when people say, why did you quit med school? You had one more year left. I said, you know what? Something inside me said, you got everything you needed out of this experience. Take it and move on with it because now you can use this stuff for the next thing you're going to do, which I didn't know what the next thing I was going to do was. I, I knew I was, I loved bodybuilding, but I didn't know how I was going to obviously, you know, make money from it or, or make it a career. And so you probably didn't know that either, but you just knew that it was time to leave, right? Yeah, I knew it was time for a change. And I, I always think that life brings a lot of lessons. I don't really think that there's much failures. You know, you just kind of, you have to decipher the meaning of what happens during that perceived failure. And I knew that I learned a lot during that process. I would apply it to my future, but I didn't know it would come to this, obviously. But yeah, I'm happy. I'm happy I did the film school. I'm not gonna lie to you. I'm happy I was there. Yeah, yeah. Now that, but it was it was a necessary evil in a sense because now you could you wouldn't be able to do what you're doing now and be successful at it or as successful at it. Obviously, you prepped this year for Team Universe. You won your class and you got your pro card. Going into that show, did you feel that you had a, a good shot at winning? Yeah, I I, I really thought I was gonna get my pro card there. I, I truly did. We'll put I, some I pictures really up from there. So. For this prep, I, I, my focus was just everyone in the gym could tell that I was different. Not you know, I was an ass or anything, but I was just really focused. I wasn't talking much. I was training really hard. I was dieting harder than ever, doing more cardio than ever. So I knew that I was putting the work to set me up for that big moment. Do you think men's physique is is ge very genetically geared? In other words, if you don't have good genetics, you're not going to do well in the division because it's like bodybuilding. You can almost compensate a little bit with putting on extra muscle. Men's physique, there is a muscle component, but if you don't have like the, the waistline and the taper and everything like that, it seems like it's just not a good fit for some people. You know? Yeah, I I completely agree. I mean, if you don't have the small waist, you know, flaring lats, wide back, you know, full chest pack, it, it's it, like you said, bodybuilding, you kind of get away with certain things, but in men's physique, you can't because mm -hmm. if you don't have that V taper, you're not gonna you're not gonna place well. Right. And your muscles have to have a certain look too. You can't be overly hard too in the division. So it's mm -hmm. like there has to be that balance. But it's I'd say it's very genetic. And I have people come to me, you know, want to compete. They they ask for prep, and I'm like, you know, this may not be the division for you just sure. by looking at them. You know, just being honest. Yeah, you have to be sometimes because it is a very structurally or genetically, you know, uh, geared division. Whereas, like I said, bodybuilding is not necessarily because you you can make up for it in, in adding extra muscle. Classic physique, more along the lines, fits into that men's physique structure uh, um, um, division. That's why I asked him before the show. I said, Matty, would you ever consider doing classic? And you said that a lot of people have asked you that same question. Yeah, a ton. Yeah, I, I got all my last prep. You know, you gonna do classic? You do classic. I'm like, no, physique. I'm gonna finish where I started. Get my pro yeah. current physique. But I would never say I'm not gonna do classic because I'm be honest with you, Dave. I don't train legs at all really that much anymore. Oh no. And, no, why I not? I mean, I can't. They grow too much, Dave. Oh. Uh, well, then yeah, why wouldn't like, you do classic if they, if if they are, if your legs actually grow easily? I think I think down the road that's something I'm gonna probably do, but I, I kind of want to achieve this certain look I have for physique and then transition down the road. Cause I'm still young, you know. There's no rush in my opinion. Right. So I, I'd like to get to Olympia in men's physique first. Yeah, for sure. Well, you're in you're in your growth years now. By the way, it's 26 to like 30 to me is the best growth years because your metabolism slows down a little bit. I find that right. people grow in those years the best, you know. So. Um, you're saying I'm wasting my time? No, I'm saying that now is the time to strike if you're going to do that, if you're going to train yeah. legs. Don't wait till you're 30. Things, yeah. When you hit 30, things start th feeling sore and injuries don't go away so fast. When you're in your 20s, everything heals up, you know? <laughs> <laughs> what's the, um, so what's the goal for 2021? Uh, do you have a show picked out? Yeah, so I'm going to do as many shows as it takes to qualify for Olympia. I'm going to do five cool. to six shows on the on the schedule right now I'm looking at. Yeah. Um, the first show I planned out is, I believe it's called, it's one in Louisiana, Optimum Classic. Yep, yep, you know, Prince Harrison. And I'm going to go until I, have, whatever it takes to get to Olympia. My goal is to get to Olympia next year, well this year now, so that's my goal. Well, good luck getting to the Olympia. Obviously, congratulations on the on the big win at the Team Universe and the IFBB Pro Card, and uh, congratulations on your business. and. Uh, Keep us updated, and uh, I'd love to hear a success story, and uh, you definitely are inspirational for people who maybe don't know what they want to do with their lives. Your message is clear. Do what you love to do, and you will find a way to make money doing it. Without a doubt. I appreciate you having me on the show, Dave. All right, and uh, that's going to take us to the end of another episode of Live With, brought to you by Species Nutrition. I'm Dave Palumbo from Matt Grego. We'll see you next time.